Welcome everyone. We're going to do a nice 60-minute practice today. My name is Adrian, and um, as always, if you have blocks or a sturdy stack of books, as well as a blanket or a foldable towel, go ahead and grab that. And um, I will meet you on my mat. So to start today, I'm going to fold up my blanket and scoot it under the seat. I'm choosing to extend my legs out long in front of me. So I have a little bit of lift in the seat and also kind of pull on the cheeks and the muscles of your buns. And um, that might tilt the pelvis forward a little bit more so you could have a more upright spine. If you um, are sitting flat on the ground and choose to have the legs out long, you might actually find yourself rounding over just because you might not have the flexibility in the back sides of the legs and the hamstrings. Um, you might also look like this with your knees up nice and bent. Um, if you feel that tightness in the backs of your legs, it's really good to keep the knees bent. And then maybe you can shift some of the flesh, the seat backwards out from under you. Maybe if you wiggle, you can feel those bony points one day making it down to the floor. And you'll notice that your spine is a little more erect, stacked straight up. Um, going to sit on this blanket gives you a little bit of bonus lift, gives you more length, more space underneath the hamstrings. And if you like, you can take any other seating position. I'm just starting out here today. Um, it feels a little more structured, um, but whatever you need. So you can shut down for a little, for a little bit um, as we center and tune in to the practice that we want for ourselves. So I'm shutting down the eyes. You're welcome to do the same or just soften the gaze, casting it down to the lap. You may allow the chin to lower towards the chest, bringing length to the back of the neck. Maybe slightly engage the belly muscles. Not making them rock hard or anything, just um, tightening them. So you're aware of all the organs in this torso package that those muscles can contain. And by drawing them in slightly, we're just compacting everything, centering it so things are a little more sturdy, a little more structured up and down. Same as why you know, I'm going to suggest take sense of where your head is, where your shoulders are. Maybe it'll feel more secure and more structured and stacked if you shift everything back until the head the shoulders are now hovering directly over the pelvis, over the hips. And just notice how that might feel differently from where you first landed. You feel an additional bit of height. You feel a little less movement as you breathe in and out. Maybe the movement that sustains, I hope the movement that sustains is the chest rising and falling because that means you're breathing. And we'll shift our attention deeper down, okay, I guess climbing down the spine until we get down to the low belly height of the spine. And now, see if you can inflate the belly when you inhale. So rather than focusing on puffing up the chest, see instead if that buoyancy, that ballooning can be directed to the lower belly instead. Might be 
helpful to place hands on the belly. So you get that physical feedback. Long breaths, sucking breath through the nose, and watch it go down the spine. Push out the belly, and then watch it rise up the spine, back out the nose. After three, you can place the hands onto the chest, centered, and that's what I call the heart space. Directly over the breastbone, the sternum. Now sensing the chest rising and falling with the breath. Inhale, presses the chest up into the hands. And if you'd like to dedicate the effort of this practice to anyone or anything or concept, you're welcome to do that. Forming an image, a mental image, that person or thing. A group of people. Just for being the very best wellness for them. Peace. Fortitude strength. And picture that intention circled in an orb, protected. Protected by the sincere hope that your wish and that message would be delivered. Uh, taking a deep breath down into the belly, sucking the air through the nose, hold that full, and then sigh the breath out the mouth. Again, inhale deep down into the belly. Exhale out the mouth. On this last one, sweep the arms out and up. Inhale. Hold full at the top, feel the spine stacked. Engage those little belly muscles a little bit. Feel even taller. And on the exhale, bend the knees, lean the chest forward over the legs. Drape the head. Just relax. Three quiet breaths here. And after three, walk yourself back to upright, blinking the eyes open if they were not yet open already. And I'm going to remove this blanket out of the way. I have my blocks up at the top of the mat over here, um, just so I can grab them whenever it feels like I'm struggling at all. And we're going to meet in forward fold in the middle of our mat. So, the ankles, the heels are about hips width distance, so tracking straight down as if you have laser pointers in your hips and they are just going straight down to the floor. That's where you might want your feet to be. I would suggest no narrower than that. 
but certainly you're welcome for that to become wider, like the width of the mat. Maybe you bend into one leg and the other. Gliding side to side. And then come to stillness with the torso hanging between the hips. Letting the arms and the head just hang with all of their weight. You may catch opposite elbows. All the while breathing. And now with all the weight upside down, sense how the inhale and the exhale feel differently. Maybe you feel that the inhale expands the shoulder blades and the back body a little bit more. Since we have much more compression in the belly. Bend the knees, place the hands on the floor. Work to straighten the arms first, then the spine. Maybe you're able to shift the spine down between the thighs. Have a nice long straight back. I don't know about you, but my hips, my inner hips, and even my quads start to turn on when I do this. Inhale, see if you can feel and enhance that length. Exhale, straighten the legs again and fold. Let the head hang again. Maybe you sway side to side, waking up the back body. That one more time, come to center, bend the legs, maybe thighs come to 90 degrees this time, arms are straight, palms planted on the floor. Inhale, straightens the spine, gazes forward. Exhale, fold. Warming up the legs, hips, expanding the breath. One more time. Bend the knees, maybe the seat comes closer to the floor this time. Press the floor away with straight arms. Spine still long, maybe draw the navel in. So we're in a grounded squat. And if this feels horrible on your feet, or horrible isn't a good word, inaccessible, grab that block, put it right under the seat so you get something to sit on. Maybe it's on the higher height, maybe it's on the very highest height. Give yourself something to, it's, it's like a podium for ease, okay? So for most people, having their seat hanging in midair doesn't feel good, especially for a long time. We're not going to be here for a long time, just long enough for you to feel like, okay, I'm turned, these muscles are turned on. I uh, have an idea what she's getting at. So this is why props are amazing. It can really transform the felt experience in the physical body. And sometimes it lets us find just a tiny measure of ease, which lets us turn off the panic, off panic mode and realize where we are right now, instead of looking ahead, fearing whether we're going to get there or not. Okay, lift the hips up, straighten the legs, let the head hang. Again, if it feels better, bend the knees. Totally fine. If you have that block under your seat, move it out of the way. Walk the feet back towards hips with distance. If you have them wider, bend the knees, press into the feet, sweep the arms out and up, engaging the kneecaps. Catch opposite elbows up overhead, engaging the glutes to press the pubic bone forward. And while your hands are overhead, your elbows are overhead in this kind of square basket, frame in the face, pull up with the hands on the elbows. So you feel the shoulder blades slide up the back. Shoulders go up towards the ears a little bit more. Engage the low belly. Feel the lower ribs kind of tuck back in to the torso rather than heading out. Okay. Again, full up on those elbows. 
Release them, send both hands up to the sky, engaging the whole palm, the fingers spreading them wide. And now swap the grip on your elbows to the opposite forearm. It's in front. Same thing, press into the feet. Maybe you bend the knees a little bit. Press the hips forward, engage the glutes. Bend the low belly, draw in the low ribs, and lift the elbows up. Couple breaths here. Now release the grip, extend the arms all the way up, maybe palms face forward. And release the arms down by the side, palms face forward, nice and spread, fingers far apart. Pull the kneecaps up towards the face to engage the leg muscles, glutes, feeling heavy tailbone. Again, maybe bending the legs that assist you. Letting the tailbone slide down, the pubic bone forward and up slightly as if it's looking up at those low ribs that are tucking in. Shrug the shoulders up towards the ears and exhale. Let them slide and fall down the back. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, you're going to grab the left wrist. Actually, you probably can't see it. You're going to grab the left wrist with the right hand. Pull the left arm straight up. Press especially into the left foot and, or sorry, into the right foot. And start to lean to the left. Chest and belly still facing forward. And you're working to rotate the right side body up to the ceiling rather than falling down, okay? So really you're trying to pull up out of the hips rather than bend to the side. Pressing very intently into that right foot, trying to keep the hips centered and facing forward. And come back up to the center, release the arms, send them straight up, inhale, exhale, grab with the left hand, the right wrist, Pull the right arm straight up and tilt to the right. Shift the hips back over the feet. So you're probably going to have more weight in your left foot. Looking under the left elbow. And pulling the right wrist with the left hand away up out of the hip. And make that upright. Extend both arms up long and straight. Exhale, hold over the legs. Let the arms release, the shoulders slide down. Bending the knees if you need to, find the shins of the hands, straightening the arms and the spine forward, halfway lift. Exhale, hold over the legs, planting the palms, shoulder width distance, step the right leg back, then the left coming into your high plank. Now just drop the knees, take a breath, feel the shoulder blades spread across the back. Couple breaths here, engaging the legs, press out through the rear of the heel, lower the knees, shift hips back to sit on the shins. Child's pose, a few breaths here. Reach the fingertips long and away. Straighten the arms so the elbows are up off the floor. So this is an active resting pose. Maybe not really a resting pose at all. Shifting back up into your tabletop position. Reorient your body so maybe your palms are right underneath your shoulders, knees under the hips, toes can be untucked or tucked behind you, whatever feels better on the knees. We're going to inhale, lower the belly, gaze and hips go up. Exhale, press the floor away, allow the head and the tailbone to drop as the spine curves up towards the ceiling. Inhale, reverse. 
knees and hips up, belly down. When the shoulder blades together, feeling the collar blade, collarbone spread. Exhale, opposite, spine up, elbow, knees down. Still straight, arms, belly button up to the spine. Inhale, gaze up. Exhale, head down. Come to a neutral spine. Rearrange a little bit here. So neutral spine, the tabletop, fists or the palms under the shoulders, knees under the hips. I'm going to step the left foot back in space behind you. Scoot up a little bit, CC. Okay? Just so like this. Shifting forward and back, stretching the calf of the left foot. So pressing the floor away with the arms. And then you're going to come back to neutral where the hips are over the knee. And you're going to lift the left foot off the ground, aiming to keep both hips spiraling down to the ground. So you're going to need to engage that low belly. You're going to need to press the floor away with the hands. And the breathing will help. Pull that knee back in, coming to neutral tabletop. You know what's next? Right leg steps back, shifting forward and back. Right side. Coming to stillness, engage glutes and lift the right leg off the mat. Everything's still squared and facing down towards the floor. Low belly engages. If your shoulders were shrugged towards the ears, see if you can pull the shoulder blades back together and down on the back. Kneecap is pulling up towards the face. And you're breathing and pressing the floor away. And the knee comes back down to the floor. Shift back for a brief child's pose. If you want to give your arms a break, let them rest alongside. Shake out the shoulders. Back up to that tabletop. All right, I'm going to do a more fuller version of what's called bird dog. So extend the left leg back, floating off the ground, toes facing down. Now shift the weight into the left palm, extend the right arm forward off the ground. Thumbs coming up, palms turning to the left. The soft elbow point of your left arm is facing forward, so rotating out to the left. Still using that low belly. The two hip points are pointing down to the floor. We'll inhale to get long, extending out through both the arm and the heel. Exhale, pull the knee to the elbow under the chest. Inhale, long out. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale, long out. Exhale, knee to elbow. Keep the knee. Hold up and hovering, put the right palm down. So your knee is kind of pressing into your upper arm, maybe, maybe your elbow. Using those left obliques, shift the left knee down towards the wrist, floating, floating, don't let it touch the floor. And pull it back up to form. Knee to the wrist. Knee to the floor. Extend the leg back, still hovering. And replace the knee and I'm on the ground. Shift the hip side to side. All right, other side, right side. Right leg goes all the way back, toes down, hips facing down. We shift into the right hand, extending the left arm straight out in front. Again, palm turns to the right, thumbs to the sky. Inhale to get long. Exhale, knee to elbow under the chest. Inhale to get long, neck is still long. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale on. Exhale, knee to elbow. You're pulling this up towards your chest when you do. Kind of like in our, it's that cat pose. You're curving the spine up towards the ceiling. Now put the left hand on the ground, right knee still hovering up. And on those right obliques, slide. 
right knee down towards the ground, let it hover. Still pressing your both hands. And pull right knee up towards upper arm. Exhale, lower down to hover above the ground. Inhale, draw it up. Exhale, lower and hold. One more time. Pull it up. Press the right knee into the right forearm. And extend it all the way back. Take a breath to get long. Exhale, both knees down. Widen them. Toes come to touch behind. Shift the back. Shift the seat back into child's pose. A few breaths here. Arms can go out, they can go wide. Feeling the shoulders opening up. Chest and forehead coming towards the floor. After a few breaths, walk yourself back up to kneeling. And take a brief seat, maybe close down the eyes. Let the palms soften, resting on the thighs. Chin tucked, neck long. Watch the chest and the belly expand. Watch the pace of the breath and the pulse slow. And shake up the arms, the wrists. Let's bring the backs of the hands together. Fingertips are pointing down and you're pressing right on the, um, I don't really know what to call it, the tops of the hands where you bend the wrists, those together and just let the hands swing. Nice little massage on the wrists. Since we're putting so much weight and the hands flex the other way. Maybe taking circles, one direction with both. Maybe here's some nice cracks. You can have the hands and fists if you like. And then reversing the direction. Physically therapeutic and a little mind game coordinating the direction. All right, take everything out. Come to folded at the back of your mat. Feet are hips with distance. And now walk up to halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Walk yourself out to plank. Forward, hips level of the shoulders. Inhale, press the floor away. Exhale, scoop the right knee into the chest, under the body, hovering. And maybe you can step it down between the hands at the front of the mat, shifting forward and back in your little runner's lunge. Might take some nice, helpful box here. Put them underneath the shoulders to bring the floor closer to you might be able to access the pelvis and stretching the left hip flexor much more readily this way if we're not collapsed forward on the chest. All right, come to stillness, pull the right hip back, left hip forward, press the left um, palm down into the mat of the block and sweep the right arm up, twisting to the right, stacking right shoulder over left, gaze and go up towards the right thumb, Pulling that low belly in to support the twist. And cycling the arm down, coming back to our runner's lunge. Lower the right knee down, or the left knee down to the mat. Untuck the toes. And you can stay here, or I'm going to work in a quad stretch. Pulling the left hip towards the seat, pressing the left palm back into the mat of the block. And extending right arm back to catch the outer edge of the left foot in the air. Kicking, you can either kick the um, left foot back to straighten the right arm if you want some shoulder opening. And maybe you extend that by straightening or reorienting both shoulders to face forward. Or 
going to pull the left heel towards the seat with a bent right arm. You can have either hips and shoulders facing forward. This will be intense, intense quad stretch. You're working to roll forward on the quad instead of sitting on the knee. You can also access this more readily by being much more upright. So hips higher up in the air, more like a, a 90 degree angle in this thigh right here, the right thigh. And left heel up to the left seat, reaching back. And now shift the hips back to the foot. That might be how you access the quad stretch instead. If you don't feel much, that's when you roll forward off of the left knee onto the bottom of that quad. You can also turn the right foot out a little bit, rolling onto the outer edge of the right foot. And then you're gonna get a little more outer right hip opening while stretching the left quad. Press the left hand into the mat. So you're still propped up strong in the chest rather than sinking into the shoulders. Release anything you've got. Shift everything to face forward. I'm gonna back up the right foot a little bit. Grab those blocks if you have them. It'll feel good for half splits. So hips are hovering over the left knee, which is on the ground. Right leg is nice and straight. You're pulling the right hip back, pressing the left hip forward to get that nice IT stretch on the outside of your right leg. Toes are flexed back towards the face and the right foot. Spine is long. Pressing both palms into your blocks so your arms can get long. Pull the shoulder blades together in the middle of the back. And lunge forward, maybe arms leave blocks. Go up towards the ceiling, inhale. Exhale, find your blocks, press the hips back, half split. Maybe you're able to allow the head to dip closer to the shin. Waking up the right hamstring. Lunging forward again, maybe arms go up overhead then you can stay here for a spell if this is feeling sustainable to you feeling the chest lift on the inhale the hips sink on the exhale or you are always welcome to keep flowing back and forth between that lunge and the abs. And also walk the palms up onto the thigh and start to press the thigh away, coming to a slight back bend, working to straighten the arms one day, allowing the chest to tilt up towards the ceiling. So we're still lifting out of the hips, even though we're stretching the front of the right thigh. You walk the blocks up towards your feet, your front foot. Extend to the right leg to come to uh, the half split. But this time, we're going to, um, I guess the blocks really, for me, this feels good to have them where my shins are, where my right shin is. So it's almost like I'm halfway. If this is a triangle from my heel to my hips, halfway. And that is because I'm going to plant my left palm on the block. So again, pulling the right hip back, sending left hip forward. So I feel really strong, engaging the belly, engaging the leg muscles, floating the right arm up overhead, stacking right shoulder over left, engaging the belly, re-engaging the legs. So while we're twisting, and stretching the outer right leg, we are also super, super balancing. So 
come down into that lunge for a breather. And then we'll shift back into the half split and keep the blocks. Or you might work with palm on the floor, and this will intensify the side stretch on the right body, the right side body. So pressing the floor away, working to straighten the left arm so you're not sinking into the left shoulder. Back down to lunge. Reach up the back toe, lifting the knee off the ground. We are going to come through. Wide legged forward fold, so standing straddle. Legs straightening, maybe not straightening all the way. It might feel good to bend into one leg and then the other. Eventually coming to relative stillness. Take my little socks off so we don't slip. Feet are parallel facing the short edge of the mat. Um, and what I mean by that is just that the outer edges of your feet are lined up parallel with the short edges of the mat. And just let the weight of the shoulders and the head extend the spine down towards the ground. Try turning on the muscles of the legs and see if that changes the sensation of the hips going up towards the ceiling. Maybe your head is able to find some new space lower down towards the ground from, from what I had before. You can allow everything to hang. You might grab the outer ankles, elbows up towards the floor, pulling yourself down to the floor. Shaking the head yes or no. All right, walking the hands out in front of you under the shoulders, straighten out the spine, place the left arm under the face, sweep the right arm up in the air, working to keep both hips facing down, right shoulder stacking over the left. And place the right hand under the face now. Sweep the left arm up overhead, left shoulder stacks over right. Again, both hips going back. Both hips facing down. Don't allow everything to turn. Just hand going up. Back down to center. Pull the spine forward for a long spine again. Now we're just going to walk everything towards the back of the mat. So now we are in our low lunge on the left side. Or just the other side from what you did before. Okay, I'm going to grab my blocks. So I have my blocks underneath my shoulders. Palms are spread wide so I can straighten the arms a bit. Pulling the left hip back, right hip forward this time. And I'm pressing my right palm into the block so I can lift and open up, twisting to the left and up to the ceiling. Stacking left, shoulder over it, and breathing. Swing your arm down, resting in that right hip flexor stretch in the low lunge. And then you can rest the right knee on the ground this time. So I'm going to rotate it so you're not looking at my butt. You stay near the lunge. And I think, yeah, left foot forward, right back. Okay. This is all it looks like. Taking a few breaths here to mellow into the right hip flexor stretch. It's a lot. And as you pull the breath in, see if you can guide it to the low back and the right hip. And then we'll shift everything back, coming into half split on the left side. Straightening left leg, flexing left toes towards the face, 
pulling left hip back, sending right hip forward, engaging the leg muscles, working to straighten the spine. So I'm going to back up a little bit with my block so I can straighten my arms. My spine got a lot straighter that way, which means I can access that outer left IT band stretch. Might not feel, you know, quote unquote good, but it's feeling uh, sensational. And then I'll shift forward into my lunge. I can hang out down here or sweep the arms up with the inhale. On the exhale, feel the sinking of the pelvis down towards the floor a little more, maybe. Shifting hips back into the half splits. And shifting forward. This low lunge on the Janayasana, that's what it is called, devotional pose. Palms down, hips back, half split. Maybe you guide the head closer to the floor. That might be, just so you look at your knee, might be looking at your shin, might be at the foot. Shifting forward one more time. Hands can go up overhead, or you can start to press the thigh away. Chest comes up, hips might rise up away from the floor a little more. But you are working with a slight back bend. It's not slight, I keep saying that. It's actually very intense. Um, so if this feels too stressful, don't do it. This feels stressful for me right on the edge of too much and a goal that I want to go for. <laughs> and then this last one, shifting the hips back, keeping the blocks under the hands and maybe you work with this rotating half split. So right palm cements down into the block of the floor Left arm up overhead, so left shoulder stacks over right, pulling the left hip back, sending the right hip forward, engaging the legs, engaging the belly button. This is our balance stretch. Also our wobble stretch probably. Coming forward into the low lunge. Place the palms, retuck the back toe, lifting the knee up off the ground. And we're going to step back to plank this time. Each low belly, spread the shoulder blades across the back, and lower down onto each forearm one at a time. Elbows under the shoulders, toes tucked, pulling the low belly button in, the plank, the pubic bone out towards the low ribs. Engaging the legs and the glutes, pressing the floor away with the palms and the forearms. My breath is very labored here because this is a lot of effort for me. So I'll play games with myself, like shifting forward and backwards. And then lower the hips down, untuck the toes, rest in the sphinx pose. Gaze can be out about six inches beyond the fingers. Let the belly relax. So you're feeling a little bit of back bend and a low back. You can be totally passive and like sink into the shoulders. Or if you want to access the benefits of that back bend, you press yourself up. So there is a bit of effort here. Pressing the floor away, and you can even drag yourself through the arms. So pinch the shoulder blades on the back to present the breastbone and the collarbones forward. And pull the elbows back. Tops of the feet are on the ground. Maybe you engage the legs a little bit. 
and then release. Bring the elbows wide, palms knit, let the forehead or a cheek rest. Shake the hips side to side. Restoring the low back and that little, that was truly a slight back bend. Okay, bring the gaze back forward, walk yourself back up into swings, and draw your right knee up alongside the right hip and out to the side. Reorient your shoulders to face forward if they opened up to the right. So, attention back to your right side, knees directly out to the side of the right hip and your heel is right under the right knee, okay? Your foot is turned out, so the inner edge of your foot is on the floor. You might barely see my foot, but that's what's happening back over here. And I'm working to stay as heavy as possible right here in this right hip. Okay. So I'm trying to keep this right hip point. For me, it's like right here, facing down towards the mat, trying to get it to be really heavy. It's not very easy. It's simple, but not easy. And you can let the gaze soften. And you can stay upright like this, or if you want a little break on the shoulders, let the torso come down to the floor, the belly rests on the floor, and the elbows can come wide again, resting the cheek on the folded hands. Just check in to see what happened with your hip if you lower down. Maybe you need to bring the right hip back up to 90 degrees out from the side. I did, and now I feel something more. This is your half frog. If you're wondering what we're doing here, the answer is nothing. They're just hanging out. You're like a sunbathing frog. Nice moment to check in with your breath. Let that distract you from the thoughts. <laughs> So you can stay here or we can move on to something new. I'm gonna spread arms wide and let the palms be at least at shoulder height. Might feel even better to walk it up a little bit higher so you're like diagonal out from your shoulder, okay? Here, we're gonna bend the right arm, place it underneath the right shoulder, and we're just gonna start to straighten the arm. So you can see your mind is not actually straightening. I'm just pressing the floor away. And now I'm getting a stretch on my outer left shoulder, the one that's on the ground still. I can look out to the side like I'm doing now. I might creep my left palm further away from me on that diagonal, continually stretching the arm and spreading the left palm wide, continually pressing the floor away with the right palm. And again, we're not doing anything here, just hanging out. Release after a few breaths, spreading both arms wide again. And this time, extend right leg long. And that means it's time for the other side. So bring the left knee on the outer, the outside of the left hip, belly, chest still facing down. You can keep the torso on the ground and we can walk up um, to your sphinx arms. Left heel, left foot inner edge on the ground. And the left heel is right underneath straight line out from the left knee, left knee straight line out from the left hip. 
And similar to when we're in our full sphinx, have shoulders facing forward, press the floor away. Maybe you pull the elbows back so the chest slides forward through them. Also, bring everything back down to the mat, laying the chest down, letting the belly soften, releasing the back bend. So all you're working with is opening the left inner thigh. Okay. Just checking in if you do that, that you didn't release that right angle positioning with the left foot, the left uh, knee directly out from the left hip. Stay here, or we can take the next step by extending arms out at a diagonal, creeping fingertips away, away, away. And then placing left palm under the left shoulder, keeping the right shoulder on the ground, facing down and starting to look over the left shoulder, stamping the left palm into the ground to access the right shoulder stretch. Might feel good to lift the head up for a second and then lay it back down. A few breaths here. Still strong in the left arm. Back to face, all the way down in center, arms go both wide, extend the left leg long, long front of the right. Just resting here, soften the belly, the front side body. Maybe you shake the hips side to side, releasing the back bend. Bringing the palms underneath the shoulders, tuck both toes, shift hips back. Over the feet for child's pose. Looking forward, so walk ourselves back to upright. Sitting and kneeling. Knee at the back of the mat and forward fold. Looking forward, walk yourself out halfway, finding our first down dog. So our palms are spread wide, working to straighten the arms. Arms are maybe shoulder width distance, maybe a little bit wider. Feet are about hips width distance. And you might have a really, really nice bend in the legs. But still press firmly into the palms to shift the chest back towards the legs. You want the hips rising both back and up. Moving forward, step the right foot between the hands. Walk yourself up to higher crescent lunge. Just hang out here, hands can stay on the hip. You might bend the back knee a little bit. Inhale the arms up. Exhale, bring the hands prayer through center. You're going to start turning to the right. Left elbow hooks on the outer edge of the right thigh. You keep pressing the palms together, and that'll help turn the chest sideways to the right. And eventually, maybe gaze could go up towards the ceiling. We're strong and extended in the back left leg and bending into the right front leg. Pull the belly button in towards the spine. Releasing, come back up to center, inhale up. Notice this tough on the right thigh. And exhale, open your warrior two, right toes facing forward, left outer edge foot aligned with the short edge of the mat, shoulders, head, center over the hips, arms extend long, fingers away from one another. Lower left, palm to left back. Sweep right arm up overhead, maybe you tilt backwards, opening 
out the right side, body still bending into the right knee. Come back through warrior two. Turn both legs to face the side, inhale, arms up. Exhale, open warrior two, other side, bending into left knee. Both arms forward, let our gaze, or both arms away from one another, let our gaze to the left and forward. New forward. Belly in, shoulders and head centered, hovering over the hips. All right, you know what we're going to do? We're going, well, sorry, first, lowering right hand to the left side, to right back. Sweep left arm up overhead, maybe tilt back. Reverse, warrior two. Still lunging forward into the left knee. Back up to your centered upright warrior two. Now, we turn. Please press the left other direction. Or back up the mat. Maybe the bend, the bend comes into the right knee. Pulling the right hip forward, left hip back. Engaging the belly, fingertips reaching up towards the ceiling. Bring your hands to meet in prayer at the center of the chest. Start to rotate, looking over the right or the left shoulder, twisting to the left, lowering the right elbow to the outer edge of the left thigh and pressing the palms towards another one another. And those two meeting palms towards the center of the chest. Re-engage the back legs, super strong. Engage the low belly. Maybe eventually gaze goes up towards the ceiling. But gaze to the floor is totally fine. Pressing the left thigh into the right elbow and pulling the right elbow into the left thigh. All right, summon all your strength. Come back up, right? Send arms up. Open back out to the warrior two. Take a second, rotate the feet to face parallel, inhale, arms up, exhale, hold over the legs. Hello. All right, you can stay here in this forward fold, or if you would like to work on a little headstand, that is fine. So this is going to be kind of our start of the cool down. So headstand, if you know it, feel free to go into it. If you know it and want to do it, feel free to go into it. If not, come to kneeling. I'm going to walk you through it. All you're going to do, hands are now by the sides, arms long, seats back on the heels-ish, forehead on the ground. Lift the hips, rolling onto the top of the head, and maybe you need to lift it up a little bit more. You're going to stop when your hips are over your knees. So again, I might have to scoop my head forward before I put a lot of weight in it. And this is step one of your headstand, called hair pose. Like a rabbit, or also the hair on your head. And you might just mellow here. Work first drawing the shoulders down, which when you're upside down means up. Just draw them together. Down the back and away from the ears, the same as we always do. We just upside down. You can keep the arms long like this, or you can step them underneath your elbows, which are bent. And stay here. You might start, if this is new for you, this might feel like very, very different. And um, I wouldn't say like painful on the top of the head, but. Um, your scalp isn't used to <laughs> pressure on it. So um, if it hurts, just chill out in the child's pose. But if you do feel, you know, a sensation of, wow, this is different. I feel maybe like top of my head's a little soft. That is not unusual. And that's why you might want to just stop here in this headstand and just maybe close your eyes. Start to watch the breath inflate the body in this upside down position. You can take one more step by tucking the toes underneath and straightening the legs, shifting the hips up in the air. This is step three. 
same in here. Maybe close the eyes. Follow the breath. Maybe we'll start to walk the toes closer towards the body as the hips come over the shoulders. Stay here. Maybe bend one leg, resting the knee on the forearm. The upper arm, I mean, upper arm. Maybe bend the other one. Let it rest on the little shelf created by the upper arm. So have your elbows bent backwards at a 90 degree angle. Our fingers are nice and spread. This is little baby heads. Oh, like egg, then your leg. And stay here. Or we the belly. Start to send the leg all the way up. Holy cow. And pull the ears down away from the ear crease. Space between the ear and the shoulders. In with the breath, try to even it out. When you're ready, pull the legs down. Step them back to this little triangle of the dumbbells. Lower the knees, all the way back towards the feet, extending arms out in front, resting in good old familiar child's pose. Maybe you rock the head on the forehead, side to side. Maybe you bring the arms loose, relaxed along the side. Filling up the whole back body with the breath. And when you're ready, you're going to walk yourself up very gently and slowly. Letting the head hang as you do so. And eventually, you'll bring the chin back to neutral, parallel with the floor. And you can just rest here. Take a few minutes to even out again. So our world just got turned upside down. So I feel like, um, I've never taught headstand in my class on here because um, I either feel like you don't have time or I'm nervous that people are nervous about it. So I hope that uh, while walking you through that, whether you chose to go along with it, you felt like you understand the different steps or when you do feel more comfortable taking another one. But there really is no need to ever put your feet up in the air. That's why I take so much time to walk through, talk through, let you access the grounded steps of headstand. All right, we have a few more things. Um, and since we did a lot of twisting today, we're just gonna do one more bout of it, even out. So come to seated, lay back on the floor, the knees float in the air, shins parallel. Pull the knees kind of away from you until you feel the low belly turn up. Inhale, exhale. Shift the weight onto the right hip, lowering the right knees to hover. Trying to stay heavy in the left shoulder. So we're twisting, but we're also using our obliques. Inhale, exhale, driving up to center. Inhale, exhale, lower this time, rocking onto your left hip, right shoulder stays heavy. Knees and feet hover to the left. Inhale, exhale, draw everything up to center. Hold in this parallel framed position of the legs. You feel the low belly turn on. Maybe pull the feet a little further away from you so your thighs start to come into a little diagonal. When you hear my voice changing as I start to engage those belly muscles. 
drawing the low belly down so the low back makes more contact with the floor. And the lower the feet, and let the knees go wide, coming into your reclined bound angle pose. And you can rest here. If this hurts your knees, slide some blocks on the outer edges of both thighs. My other one. Right up. Right? So if your knees are way up high, it's totally fine. Just make your blocks go higher. So the outer edges of the thighs catch the tops of your buttons. And if this hurts, like Blocks are too hard. You can put a blanket over them, or you can just not do this at all. And knees can just go up to the ceiling, so it's the feet on the ground, or the legs can extend super long in front of you. We are just coming into our final resting pose or shavasana. Focusing down the eyes. Set the palms face up. Feel the weight of your bones and joints. It's anchors to the ground below. And create a structure that encases and supports our organs are critical critical organs that hear that structure supports the organs in a way that they can soften and relax. We don't need the same amount of protection as when we're out and about walking the world. Even when we are orienting ourselves upright. It's like we can Lay back and spill out. Lodging the torso, the cavern. Expand and contract the breath. So when you are ready, commit to staying here. Say that to yourself. <sighs> Say, I let go. Loosen the cheeks, the jaw, the eyebrows, and the forehead. The ears, heavy sliding, slackening down towards the floor. Bringing with it relax scalp, hairline. Simply rest. You should stay here for say at least 20 slow breaths. If you can even Keep track of that one. And even if you can, I encourage you to enjoy this rest for even longer. And I will see you next week. I hope you are well in the meantime. Thank you, thank you for joining me and everyone else out on the web at the same time. Wishing you peace. And um, we will talk soon. Bye-bye.